Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Apologies for starting a little bit late. Fog is killing traffic in Bratislava, so it uh, was a little bit difficult to get here, but we finally arrived. And look who I have here. Hello, guys. Uh, which camera are we? Is it this one? This one here. Ah, okay, okay. <coughs> so I think we can switch it a little bit to the, your yeah, area. I, I can move a little bit closer. Yeah, so there we go. So, uh, how something Poanglitsky works is we speak mostly in English. You are allowed to speak Slovak whenever you want, whenever there's an expression that you don't know. Uh, don't worry about specific words. Just say them in Slovak. Like, it's totally cool. Okay. We are here just to get to know you. Before we get started, though, I have to make a couple of um, shout-outs, right? So, first of all, let me start by thanking you, the subscribers of the channel. So thank you to Will Korn, thank you to Adam Zart, Menved, Slavsky, Laurent, Ludmila C, Sin Sinister, Cynthia, Yoyo, Just, Vendo, Mazurovets, Patricek, and Tvahorovki Rolik. Tvahorovki Rolik. Yes, I always make the mistake now. <laughs> thank you so much. And I also <laughs> want to thank my moderation team, who's always here helping. Uh, for, because look, already people writing stupid things, so... Uh, yeah. I think I think we can we can already ban this person. But anyway, let me thank Duke Lock, Teresa, Mr. D, Roman Drevo, George, Nati, Cynthia, Ludmila C, Lou Vojtkova. Uh thank you guys for moderating and for being there for me. So now for those people that don't know you, because this podcast is actually viewed outside of Slovakia and Czech Republic is viewed as far as New Zealand wow, and Patagonia. We have people listening. So who the hell are you? Well, um, I don't know how to introduce myself, but uh, maybe let's say I'm a small content creator and a street workout athlete. And wh what, uh, what kind of content are you making for those people that... Uh, well, we mostly make uh, vlogs about uh, living with a disability, uh, having relationship with a disability. We also make a lot of uh, funny videos about disability. And uh, I started with uh, motivational videos about uh, working out with my own body weight, calisthenics, street workout, and so on. Yeah, I see stuff that I can't even imagine doing. <laughs> With my body, it's kind of hard to pull my body with these small little arms. Well, the the start is always the hardest, you know. Mm -hmm. I When I was starting, I I couldn't uh, move in a bed. I couldn't move with my hands. My mom had to turn me around uh, at night to not have... Uh, what's it called? If you if you lay down on one part of a body, it's it will... Sores. You will get yes. some sores. Yes. So that, that to me is... H how did you get past that? How do you get from not being able to do... Where do you find the motivation to want to? Well, I don't really know because uh, mostly I just wanted to move forward. I just uh, I just didn't want to stay in my room and uh, be mad uh, at the world for what happened to me or so on. So I just, I just wanted to start learning again and uh, I learned everything. And you had to do it... Uh, therapy or on your own or oh uh, well therapy, but uh, physical therapy yes yes uh, the physical therapy is uh, really expensive in our country so uh, it's just not enough if you visit the therapy because you can just go for like three weeks in a uh, three months so you have a lot of free time that you you have to train on your own if you don't it won't move much forward that's one of the most shocking things for me I injured my tailbone my coccyx And I was not feeling well, like I was fractured. And they sent me to physical therapy. And I was shocked to know that there's a limit, that there's 10 of them that you can take. Yep. And I'm like, how does, how does it work that there's a limit to, and you have to get better by 10 of them? Well, it, it, ju it just doesn't make sense. But th there's a lot more stuff that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and maybe we can cover some of that. Uh, I want to go back to, to your early life. Tell us where you're from and and your situation when you were growing up. Uh, Maybe we can bring this a little bit closer to you because you got to speak into that mic. 
Well, uh, I'm from a small city, uh, Seret, Slovakia. So uh, I was growing up there. Also, uh, there's uh, small villages nearby. So I was on a countryside. Mm-hmm. Could be. Yeah, something like that. So it was a small city and the countryside. So mostly, I don't know, I was, uh, I loved sports. I was a good student. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. So when you are not disabled from being from a ch- childhood? No, no, no. Oh, so may we ask what what, what happened? Uh, when I was 13, I was diagnosed with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a special kind of a cancer. It's like uh, it uh, uh, it uh, attacks the lymphatic system mm-hmm. of your body, and uh, I had uh, I had the chemotherapy treatment, and uh, as the side effects of the chem treatment, I uh, ended up in a chair. It uh, shouldn't be permanent, but when I was like 18, uh, my uh, health got worse, and they told me that I will be bound to a chair forever. Do you remember getting those news and what was going through your mind? Mm. When it started, I was pretty mad about everything. I was really, really sad and I was angry that uh, why did this happen to me? But uh, as the time flew and I started not to notice that uh, I can live my life to its fullest, even though I have a disability, I uh, I accepted it and... Uh, I learned how to move forward. So what do you tell to those people that because typically like I've lived in a lot of countries and Slovakia is has a one special thing that I don't know if it's central european or slovak because I haven't lived more in central europe but people tend to to complain a lot yeah <laughs> about their situation how they live here and they don't really have problems they have food to eat they they don't really know what problems are how, how do you deal with people you know complaining about things and and you having to face real difficulty well there's actually not much people people uh com- complaining to me because they know that i'm in a hard situation and and if i listen to their complaints it will maybe look funny to me you know because Yeah, I I really I know that there's a lot of people people that have a hard time in life. It's uh just because I have disability, I don't think that uh, I'm the one that should be telling others that you should live better or so on or tell them to not complain, you know, because there's still a lot of people that have even harder times in life than me. But uh yeah, mostly mostly people are complaining about dumb stuff, you know, like i don't know really like they want to get rich they are not they, i they are not rich they <laughs> i don't know they don't like their job you know but they can switch no one is holding them in their jobs and so on something seems so silly right yeah well yeah it really seems silly to me because it's it's the things you can still change you know so uh if you're not happy somewhere and you can change it just go for it or if you can make it better and uh, become happy then try to make it better. So one thing that I wanted to avoid on this podcast is to put people in boxes, right? Yeah. And I exactly. think that when I was doing research, I think that people tend to just put you in the box of disability and things like this. And I, I don't want to do that. I want to know you. Um, so let's start by, why don't you tell me about the things that you actually enjoy doing? Well... I enjoy playing video games a lot. I saw that you came to my stream and actually I was not aware that you <laughs> that you were streaming. So are you actually actively streaming? Not really. No, uh I think I enjoy more playing games with my friends or just chilling by myself than streaming. Uh it's okay for me to stream. I tried streaming. I I had some viewers there. I had a lot of fun with them, but uh I'm not feeling for it yet to be streaming, you know, but maybe in the future I might think about it. I was thinking about actually streaming uh, uh what's the game called? Dance something. It's like uh where you dance and you have a camera and the camera Dance Central? Maybe. Uh, not not sure. Or you mean just dance? Uh 
Well, you're dancing and <laughs> the camera is recognizing your movement. The connect, right? Yeah, and giving you points. So and th- I, there's a few. Yeah, and I, I wanted to, to stream this with my fiance because uh, it might be fun. And uh, also it's uh, a lot of interaction with the chat because they can choose the songs you're about to dance on and so... So maybe I'll I'll get to it. It's some of my favorite games, those dancing games. I used to play a lot of uh Zumba World Party on the Xbox One with the Connect. And that's how actually that led me to actual Zumba dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw you're a Zumba instructor actually. But that started with a video game. Wow. With that video game. So that would be fun. Fun to watch. Do you have any particular songs that you enjoy dancing <laughs> to? Uh I don't know. Anything that's good. I, I just started st- listening to uh, Lil Nas X made a new League of uh, Legends anthem. I haven't seen it yet. And uh, I really f- find that song good. So maybe that one. But within the game, do you, you're you playing it, right? Uh, not yet. I just saw it. Uh-huh. I have tried it. I think it was somewhere in... A, there was this uh, championship in mm-hmm. uh, uh, esports in Slovakia. And uh, I think there was a... Uh, you could play it there. And I tried it and there's actually a mode where you just uh, dance with your hands. So there's a disability mode for people bound to win- wheelchairs. Yeah, but actually, for example, if you buy it on the Nintendo Switch, you might enjoy it more because there it's only by hands. Ah. You take these side controllers and those are detecting the movement. There's no camera. So maybe that would be more interesting. Yeah, but it, it will be a bit harder to connect it with the streaming, or? No, no, it's, it's the same. It has an HDMI. Ah. It's the same. The same cable will go to it. We can talk about it. Okay. And I can tell you more about it, because I think if you have those in your hands, or VR, because VR is all in your hands. Yeah, true. So games is one thing. Um, it, what are your favorite games? Or the well, ones that you remember the most. I just want to say hello, Lutska. <laughs> we you met, know? Yeah, we met in Widadu. So, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite games, I think it's uh, World of Warcraft, because <laughs> I'm just playing it for 17 years now. So, 17? Sin- yeah, since it came out. Do you pay for an account? Oh, of course. Oh, Jesus. So, you probably paid for a small car with all the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> with some i hope I'm not bumping into you. No, it's Sorry. okay. It's okay. The small studio. Uh I- any other games that you enjoy playing besides? Uh there's a lot of games I played actually. I played the uh, Left 4 Dead 2, I played the uh, Counter Strike, I played the uh, League of Legends, I played the uh, Warcraft 3, uh Star- StarCraft, uh also some story games like God of War. Do you have the new one? Not yet. But I'm about to get it. But I'll just wait be- for it to go cheaper because like at, at the release, the 80 euro price tag is a bit too much. Yeah. The the thing is, for these, is it's easier to buy them like way in advance because I, I you could still find it for 50-something euro when they first announced it. Uh-huh. And then it goes to 70, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So games, gamer, that's something new that I learned from you. What else? Do you enjoy doing besides gaming? Well, spending time with my uh, family, with my fiance, and of course working out. But at the moment, I'm a bit uh, lazy shit. I'd call myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, why are you having this lazy moment? Uh, since Corona came, I became really, really lazy. You know, there was a lot of uh, restrictions, and you couldn't go out to work out and so on. And uh, That made me lazy because I, I couldn't go there and then I didn't want to go there. And now I'm like, I just, w- we were on a vacation at this vacation. I was really active. So I loved it there. I was swimming a lot and we did a lot of stuff. We went out and so on. But uh, when I get home, I still can't get into it to, to come back to the gym. And it is a difficult thing to push yourself back to it. It's is it because you are not enjoying those activities anymore? No, it's it's because I'm scared and demotivated by uh the pushback you get when you take a break. 
from training, you know, like uh, I do sometimes go train and uh, or do exercises. And when I see that before I could do 25 pull-ups in uh, one session, like without going down from a bar. Also with your chair, I no, saw no, no, that you no. were doing. Uh, yeah, I, I can do <laughs> it with my chair too, but not 25. <laughs> yeah, just uh, I, I, can, I could do like 15 with my chair, I think, and 25 without the chair. But now when I go back, uh, I did like 13 pull-ups without my chair and I couldn't catch a breath. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, what's happening with me? <laughs> so it's it's going to be a process, but... I mean, you look like the type of person that can overcome anything. So. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll get into it. So let's talk about uh, your influencing because you do have quite a following, I think. And I, I had a lot of positive people writing that they really enjoy your your work with your girlfriend, uh, the videos that you guys make. Uh, how did you come up with the idea? Well, it started with uh, me, uh, when I uh, started working out, I saw that people around me are getting motivated by it because I, I didn't train by my didn't train by myself. I went out to a street workout course that's outside, in a park, and uh, there was just these strange people that I never saw before, and they they like to speak with me. They they told me that it uh, it pushes them forward to see me working out on me. And uh, then I was like, okay, well, well, let's make it bigger. Why just give the motivation to these few people? I, I was happy to give mm -hmm. it to the few people, but I wanted to to give it to everyone I could. And the way you do this is just to make a video and put it on the internet. So I made my first uh, street workout video. I put it on the internet and uh, it got like... Uh, 10,000 views, I think. And I was like, wow, that's nice for a new YouTube account and so on. But I was like, I think it could go better. And uh, then I started uh, researching how could I push the video even more. And I found out there's a lot of companies that buy your videos. Really? Yeah, like uh, Jukin Media. And yeah, they actually bought the video from me. And uh, they also have, if you know, people are awesome. Mm -hmm. But uh, what do they do with the videos? Well, they sell it, f sell it to the third parties. Mm -hmm. So you sell them your video, but uh, you get a percentage of your video of the sales that makes. So uh, if your video is good and they will sell it to a lot of third parties, you can make a lot of money on it. And when I sold it to them, I I had no expectations. I was just like. Well, let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was like two months after I sold it. And a friend of mine was like, oh, look, look, look at these people are awesome. They they posted your video. You, you already got one million views in there. It was like in four or five hours since they posted it. And it, it reached one million. I was like, damn. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like really happy. And it, it went to like 3.5 million in a week, I think. Jesus. So... <laughs> I was amazed by it and I was like, okay, let's let's make some more videos. So I started making more workout videos. And uh, since my uh, girlfriend always uh, <sighs> supported me mm -hmm. and uh, I saw that uh, she was happy for me to, to actually go somewhere or do something that, that motivates the world, I was like, yeah, why, why don't we make videos together, you know, just... You're amazing. She, she was a, she's a really good speaker. Uh, people really love her when she's talking. I know. I'm, we're missing her today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> and uh, because of that, I was like, let's let's start making videos together. And she was like, nah, she's not ready for the camera, and so on, so on. And uh, then we then we saw that Widado is uh, recruiting people mm -hmm. for their videos. And uh, actually, one of our friends told us that uh, she signed for it, that we should try too. And we signed, then we went there, we made some uh, 50 questions with them. If you saw those videos, not sure. And uh, also some shows I they did. had. Yeah. And also some show shows they had. And then my girlfriend, my fiance, was like, uh, okay, you know, I, I feel comfortable, comfortable in front of the camera. So. Yeah, let's start making videos together. So we started with uh, 
život s vozíkom Life with the wheelchair. So that was like a vlog. Yes. So you're talking a lot about inspiring people and that's such a nice thing, but who inspires you? Where do you draw your inspiration? Mm. Well, it's uh, definitely my mom, my fiance, and uh, there's in the last uh, part of my life there's some uh, other disabled pe- disabled people that inspire me. If you know uh, Michal Skombar, he's a he's a book writer. What's his disability? He's uh he's bound to a bed. Mm-hmm. He he can move only with the two fingers and uh he's writing the books with two fingers and his uh chin. Wow. So uh there's, like a, there's also another public speaker, I don't know his name, but he doesn't have any Nick Wojcik. You know who I'm talking yes. about. Lately I've also seen you that you are cooperating a lot with uh in Instagrammer as well. Yes, yes, uh I met this guy on a TikTok. It's a uh, Frantisek yeah. and uh funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really like his content because I uh I didn't want to I wanted to make more f- of a fun content and uh s- I don't want to say stop with the uh, educational content but just uh give it a break. Mm-hmm. And I saw that he's doing a really good educational content and I also made some fun content so I was like i really like you what you're doing and so on he said he really likes what i'm doing and we were like why don't we meet i was like okay and i was like you want to shoot some videos together and then w- and at the time we made the video where we met in a park and i was like uh yo you want to go for a walk or you know this kind of jokes with uh disability you know, we obvious we're obviously both on the wheelchairs so if you want to go for a walk <laughs> sounds hilarious to people Also there's um if you're in a relationship with a girl in Slovakia you you call it we walk together like um, you know so what So what what is the expression? Chodíme spolu. Chodíme spolu. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes, but in uh, if you translate it to English it is it's we walk together it doesn't make sense in English obviously but in Slovak it makes sense. So we made this kind of jokes in the video and it had like I think it has like 1.2 million views. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's great. It, actually, look at the viewer count. It looks like Bratislava Castle. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the shape of Bratislava Castle there. <laughs> But so you find humor in in the situation. Do you find that that's the best way to deal with the situation, humor? It's a part of it. You if you can make fun of it, you probably accept it the way you live. And uh you can actually push forward with it you know because if you keep thinking too much about your disability like you can think about the part of your disability that tells you you can do this you can only think about the part of the disability where you ask yourself can i do this and the answer should be always yes you know you, you can't stop just by thinking about things you cannot do That's where people get stuck a lot quite a bit that they lose focus of what they can do. So you're very right about that. Do you think or have you encountered that maybe people feel uncomfortable when they first meet you or or they don't know how to behave around you? I don't think they feel uncomfortable. I think they are curious and they don't know how to behave exactly like, like you said. Uh which is not bad and also not good you know it's like i understand that if you never met a disabled person you don't know how to uh, behave mm-hmm. you know uh in his uh what's it called spolochnost in his company yes in his company i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay that's how we learn and also when you don't know you can ask the chat because we have people that speak really well so Okay. You know, if you don't know the word you can ask. Oh, that there's a long question where I, yeah. I got attracted by it. You can go ahead and read it from Effie. I'm curious we are trying to push people to provide better access for people with medical conditions. What about VR games? Are they prepared like 21st century mankind for people with disabilities? I never played VR games actually. And you should. 
I never, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm lying. I played VR games, but uh, I think there was also um, uh, the disability mode. Mm -hmm. You could turn on the disability and uh, you just go by your hands. Yeah, and especially now with the new he headsets coming out, you can even control things with the eyes. Oh. And like it with your face movement. So, Effie, I think it's there. I think sp especially if uh, if you have access to your arms, then you can definitely without issue play because most games yes. don't require walking. I, I even... S I, this is a bit of topic, but I saw a guy that's playing uh, Call of Duty Warzone, which is a, which is a first-person shooter. And he's playing it with his mouth. And I, I, I think he's Spanish. I'm not sure. And, you know, this, this is for me, like, I, I don't understand how things work, but um, don't worry. It, it holds in that, in that <laughs> container. Don't worry. But people are able to do the, like, the most amazing things, being disabled, missing limbs, like you said, just with a mouth. And us people that have everything to us, we're just not able to accomplish those things. So why do you think that is? Uh, I think it's because uh, we see all these uh, famous and rich people all over the world. You know, there's uh, the social media spreads the wipe that everyone is famous, rich, successful, and so on. And people get people can get demotivated by watching too too much of this, you know. So uh, you should be able to question yourself. Either you can do this or can't do this. And uh, if you question yourself, your answer should be, I can do everything in my power to reach my goals, you know. And uh, if, you, if you always keep going, I think you, the motivation will come also. It, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, but... Uh, I think everyone everyone can do what he wants to do in his life. He just has to fight for it. Sometimes you, you have to do stuff you don't like to reach your goals. Like, um, let's say you have to work in a Peugeot, or I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, to make some money actually, yeah. to fulfill your dreams. And uh, then you can start working on uh, your, let's say, own company or own dreams. But uh, yeah, there's always a way. You just have to find it. I think the if I'm hearing you correctly, is just you have to work for what you want. Yes, and yeah, I think that's probably uh, probably you're very right that most of us can't do things because we're not willing to put the time or the work that it takes. Yeah, and also sometimes your mind stops you. You know, my mind is crap. Yeah, uh, well, my mind is not not really healthy at this time too. So, <laughs> what helps? Do you have you ever benefited from? therapy from talking to somebody oh uh, yes yes would you recommend it because actually most of my guests that have been here have been recommending it yes as an option um well there's always a way you can deal with your stuff but uh, sometimes you need someone else help and uh, the best way to get the help is to actually find a specialist you know, yeah, your friends can give you good advices, your family can give you good advices, but the specialist is, is someone from a third party that's that's all about that stuff and can tell you from his point of view what you should do. And uh, I think that's more uh, objective. objective. Yeah. Also personal, probably, yeah. up to you. Uh, maybe just if we take a step back, because this was a very interesting question we talked about before, and... It's about when people meet you and they don't know how to behave. So what are the do's and don'ts? If we want to be polite and we want to be respectful and and I, I think I think I understand that sometimes people might not seem as respectful because some people are just ignorant. Not stupid, but ignorant, right? They don't know. Kids especially. Maybe. Well, uh I'm okay with kids because they're still learning, you know? And uh it's fine if a kid is curious and wants to ask something it's fine when a kid is staring what i don't find okay is when a kid is staring and his parents tells him don't stare at this guy don't stare at this guy you know it's that's a bit weird you know like if a kid is staring then the parents should be more like oh you see that's a guy he's in a wheelchair because he had some health condition you know you have to 
tell the kids you have to learn them because not learn uh, teach. teach them sorry and thank yeah. you for that correction very good <laughs> and uh yeah if if you do this it's okay but uh adults are uh, mostly most of i i think they are mostly fine it's like they're curious also but uh there's some stuff you shouldn't do well, one thing you shouldn't do is if you see a disabled person and you want to help him and uh you you start talking to him and you tell him can i help you and he he tells you no i don't need your help but thank you you should respect that you, you don't push it too far you know like uh the person with a disability knows what he needs help with and what he doesn't need help so uh so this is one thing you sh- you should never do you should always politely ask mm-hmm. if he tells you no i don't need help you should respect it if he tells you yes can i get your help you can help him the next thing is that uh there's some adult people that actually see you they never saw you before and you meet with them or you get into conversation and the first thing they ask is what happened to you well it's okay with me if someone asks it, asks it i can answer and i don't have trouble answering this question but there is a lot of people with disability that did not accept their disability their disability so uh you could hurt them so uh it's up to your um uh, i don't i don't know how to say that but i i think how i i i think i understand so that means that uh when they haven't accepted his disability is they they still haven't made peace like you yes. with wh- where they are so they still hope that it will go away or No, I I don't think they hope because they they if someone tells you that uh your spine is broken and your n- nerves are dead mm. there's at the moment there's uh nothing that can regenerate uh ner- neural cells. So uh I think they know that they will be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life but they did not accept the fact that they will stay in a wheelchair, you know. So uh it hurts them to talk about it and you don't want to get into that conversation because yeah. the person can get mad you know and it's not your fault he gets mad it's also not his fault he gets mad it's uh you just shouldn't ask yes just to be on the safe side you shouldn't ask is there any more don'ts that we should be aware of as to not offend i think it's good to get educated on these things right because i think most people have good intentions and sometimes they do these things without knowing yeah yeah that's exactly what you said you know some people don't mean it bad but it does well if it, if it gets to the point where you speak to a disabled person you you will get to a bad situation even though you didn't want to so uh there's uh there's one more thing that is uh, like uh you never should do and that's When you see a disabled person and you want to speak to him or ask him anything, never ever speak to him like he's mentally retarded, mm-hmm. you know? Like because there's a lot of people that think that if you have a physical disability, also your brain doesn't work or you have a men- mental disability, you know? And they start speaking to you like you're a child or you know like, "Oh, my little one, what happened? What happened to you?" You know, and it sounds like some creepy babka in Petrozhalka. Well, it's not <laughs> it's not just creepy babkas. No. <laughs> no. No. There's more people like that, but yeah, uh mostly it's uh the el- the elders because the elderly ones because uh in uh, when when there were, when Slovakia was a part of uh Russia mm-hmm. or let's say is a mm-hmm. If you know what's that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh at the time Every person with physical disability was locked up in a asylum. Yeah. And uh they could never go out because uh the the system that was there thought that disability looks bad and they didn't want to show bad things in the streets, you know. Yeah, and and it's such an interesting topic that I actually I didn't consider discussing with you but So I'm a history major, right? I studied history. Oh. <laughs> and 
<clears throat> and this is always interesting for me, right? Because now I can make the connection, for example, that Slovakia and foreigners, for example, this is a country that is not used to having foreigners. And I find it that people are mostly, it's not that they are xenophobic or racist. It's just that they don't know. They never met somebody that's different. And for them, when something is different to you, the natural human reaction is fear. Yes. So I would imagine that also the older generation to some extent is not used to openly disabled. The country is not prepared for disabled people. So is there a similar connection, do you think, that people? Uh, well, I, 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 don't, I don't really know how to answer this. It's a tough question. But do you think that people are to some degree not scared but not comfortable seeing it? I, I think it's as you said, that uh, they fear something they don't know. You know, like uh, they don't know how disabled people can live and so on. So they are they're scared of them. Or I, I, you know, people are scared of something they that's unknown to them. And i think that's the reason why they act like that mostly but if if they get to know you they can change your mind and mostly they do change your change their mind yeah it's the same thing with being a foreigner you know once they once they get to know you yeah it's also it's it goes hand to hand with uh, also being uh differently orientated you know like sexually mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's like it's it it's a lot It has a lot of similarity with it, but uh, there's not so much people talking about it. You know, yeah. like uh, you see, there's uh, people fighting for uh, rights of uh, uh, LGBTQ communities. There's a lot of people fighting for rights of people with uh, different skin color, but there's almost no one fighting for the for the people with disability. Yeah, and the and the fun part is that disability does it doesn't. Uh, care about your orientation, your skin color, your uh, where 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 you were born or anything like that. You know, everyone can get disabled. Uh, like literally everyone. And this is this is what's shocking to me that it's as if nobody cares. Yeah. About the situation because even so we can explore it. For example, from the perspective of let's say healthcare system. Uh, I know examples of my friends that have gotten injured, and for example, they needed a a wheelchair and that's not something that you can get you have to pay for yes. a wheelchair you have to pay for crutches like how does it make sense uh, I, i don't know it doesn't make sense you know it's and what does not make even more sense is that you have to pay a lot of money for a good chair actually yeah you can get the one from the hospital which is really is that from <laughs> wish from wish.com yeah little <laughs> actually little makes good stuff so yeah but little is cheap this is true this is <laughs> but it, do, it don't you ever think of getting involved into something like that to being the voice of people here in Slovakia well i uh i accepted an offer this year from a uh, european commission to be the the voice of uh, people with disability in Slovakia and uh, the campaign will be called together for rights it will come it it's it should have been out already but uh, they had to move it because of the war stuff and so on and the uh, energy crisis that's happening and so so it will uh, start next year but uh, yeah they they chose me as the one congratulations thank you Now, the one thing I have to tell you about the European Commission is I have a personal story from a friend who was invited to some event at the European level in Brussels. And actually, she was not able to attend because they could not make it happen for somebody on a wheelchair. Well, the problem is this happens like everywhere. It's it's not just uh, the European Commission. Well, the first thing that... I like about it is that they are starting to care. Good. You always have to start somewhere, you know? So uh here's the start and we'll see where it gets in the next five to ten years. You have to go and push them to make first of all, because I, I think they have to lead by example because 
how would you expect small Slovakia to lead when the you know the yeah, bigger, the bigger countries can't uh, can do it on their own there But are some g- yeah go ahead while I check some questions here uh well it's it's better in the east or east west western part of Europe with uh how people react to disability and how people treat people with disability and so on is definitely better in the west than in the east like uh Czechia Slovakia Poland and Hungary is behind the west I I have also uh, spoken to a guy from Hungary and he told me there's a lot of crazy stuff mm. within the country also so hopefully we'll get to their levels I hope so too and Maybe one day if I ever get involved in politics as well. I have a story. Remind me to tell you about my building. But um, see, Selim Brimbor says, I didn't know your name was Dennis as well. So nice fellow Dennis here. Hello, we Dennis. A, we have a word in Spanish for people who have the same name. Uh, it's Tokayo. Mm. So instead of, if if we were both Dennis, I wouldn't call you Dennis. I would call you Tokayo. Ah, so... So you actually call them that way. Yeah, yeah, because uh-huh. it's weird that we would both call each other our names. Yes. So what do you do in Slovak? I don't know. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I don't think we have anything. We we just maybe we just choose the nicknames. Like uh you know, like Denko. You have Denko, yeah. Yeah. Like uh I had this issue when I was watching uh Woody stream and there's the the guy Dennis Menace. Uh-huh. He he use he he's playing with him a lot of games. And uh, when he was talking to him, I didn't know if he's talking to me. And when he was talking to me, he didn't know if he's talking to him and so on. So I told him, okay, uh, Roman, you know what? Uh, if you want to speak to me, uh, call me Denko <laughs> and call him Dennis, you know? So we we actually know which one you're speaking to. I know. Look, there's a very nice message from Effie here. Maybe you should read this. Then is you're definitely not disabled. You are very, very much enabled, much, much more than many people without any medical conditions. Thank you, Effie. And that's absolutely true. I think you have more That's that's the next thing about disability. Everyone in this world is disabled. Like literally everyone. You know, someone is good at math, someone is bad at math, someone is good at speaking, someone is bad at speaking, someone can learn foreign foreign languages, someone can't, you know? So uh i don't really call it disability. I just call it something that is not made for me. You know, like I, is there some better way to? <sighs> it's okay, don't worry. No, <laughs> I always get scared if I don't <laughs> spill the water. You know, that's exactly why I bought this. It's that's exactly why I bought it. See, it's a great Smart stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it doesn't spill. Is there a better way than than the term disability? Because you know, in in society now, we're getting rid of a lot of words that have this negative connotation, right? Uh, to be honest, there's a lot of words that are now like uh, better for inclusion. Like you, you shouldn't call someone in a wheelchair that uh, is uh, invalid, mm-hmm. you know, because that's like invalid sounds a bit weird to me. So disabled is a bit better, but maybe with uh, someone with a rare medical condition. Mm-hmm. There's even a there's even a push in the English language to to use, avoid certain expressions because there are a lot of expressions that are connected with disability, right? Yes. One that comes to the top of my head is abled men. Yeah. It's something that is used quite often, but they're trying to get rid of it because it's quite offensive because how are you not an abled man? I yeah. mean, abled for what? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, that's also the point, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff you can be abled for So uh yeah you don't <laughs> maybe you don't call that uh, able or this disab- I it's it's hard for me to express because uh I'm not that kind of guy that really uh depends much on the words I I think the acts should be more so uh if you actually call me invalid but you're a nice guy you you're you're trying to be nice to me mm-hmm. you're helping out and so on I I won't be angry you know but there's some people that can get angry So it's also the intention behind it. Uh, yes. Uh, Celebrimbor says, personally, if I see a disabled person, I just feel bad for them because I imagine all the problems and struggles they must be going through every single day. No way I judge somebody for that. They didn't choose to be that way. Yeah. Um, 
there's a lot of people that feel sorry for uh, for uh, other disabled people if they see them, you know. And I think it's it's fine because from my point of view, I know when I uh, was not disabled and I saw a disabled person, and I also felt sorry for him, you know. But uh, you you can feel sorry for him, but you shouldn't be speaking to him the way that you feel sorry for him you know you shouldn't be showing it to him you, you can you can feel whatever you want you know because it's your body your feelings but uh, don't try uh, let's say try to not show these feelings to this person if you if you want to show him some feelings be like uh you're uh let's say uh god damn i, I lost the word Maybe to relate to them, to be empathic. You're looking up to him uh-huh. that uh, he's managing good in his situation. So take that and turn it into they're inspiring. Yes. Well, most people are, I would say. They do. Sometimes I'm not able to move from my bed and I have no issue with me, you know. <laughs> so i I understand it if he says I don't like speaking about disabled you normal person as all others my head can't deal with the word disabled that's so inappropriate word in the situation uh yeah i I agree uh, t- so we're trying to figure out what is a better way to to describe this right because it has to have a name yeah obviously it has to have just But like you know I'm Latino you know and you're, you're European right that's yeah It happens. Yeah, but we're... we're Are physically impaired, maybe? No, I also know, because you're lifting more than I can. <laughs> well, uh, that's the fun part, you know? Like, if someone calls me physically impaired, and then they see me that I could climb up uh, a building, mm-hmm. <laughs> or, yeah, I have a photo where I was climb- climbing up on uh, the support trams of a building, uh, and so <laughs> on. So, yeah, I can play football, obviously, or well, well be. Well, maybe I could try, and but I couldn't be as good as uh, someone that does not have any uh, medical condition. But I think uh, the rare medical condition, like person with a rare medical condition or person with any kind of medical condition is like a good word because it is a medical condition, yeah. you know? It is. Let's continue to look at the chat. We've been ignoring it uh You know, e.g., my body can't handle lactose and it's terrible to eat in restaurants because they put dairy products into everything. Am I disabled? No. In any way, I just have some difficulties. Yeah, it's a medical condition. I think I also might have developed lactose disability because, yeah, Miguel, you are blurred. The camera is focused on the background. What? What? Camera doesn't doesn't want to focus on us. <laughs> camera. There we go. That's better. Also, I have a question for Denko. Do you also utterly hate the name of the SJP card? Uh yeah, it means uh zdravotne ťažko postihnutý. It means like uh uh your health is uh oh, damn, how do I, how do I say that? Compromised or like you're hardly physically disabled? Or something like that. <laughs> Is that the card that allows you to travel uh, in public transportation for free? Uh, no, it's not that one. It's not. What is the other one called then? Or is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. It is yeah. that one? It's, uh, there's two of them. The one that has a red flag over it, that means you need assistance. And there's a normal that doesn't have the red flag. And that means that you have some disability, but it's not uh, that bad that you need assistance. Mm-hmm. So Tselan Brimbor has it. Yeah, also, but that's... And there's also the blue card, mm-hmm. which allows you to park in the disabled spots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you use the big blue card, you have to have it in a car, and the small red card is the one that uh, you use when, let's say, I go to cinema. Mm-hmm. I, I have some discounts there because okay. I have the red card. Because my friend has this card, but he doesn't have a physical disability. He has... Um, what is the name uh, of that stomach disease? Crohn's disease, Crohn's. Cro- it's a stomach condition, Crohn's disease. Oh, I don't know that one. It, it has nothing to do with his, you know, uh, physical abilities. It's just... Yeah. So there's a lot of people. Oh, there we go. Oh. 
Celebrimbor has Crohn's disease, so yeah, that's the one. What well, what does it make the Crohn's disease? Like so maybe Celebrimbor, if you can write in the chat, so we can check what. Wha- in in summary, what is the the condition like? While we're waiting for his reply, so <laughs> I will tell you the story of my building. So I, I used to live on Stefanikova Street. I don't know if you're familiar with where Stefanikova is. It's the street that connects the Ministry of Interior with the Presidential Palace. Ah, yeah, I know. Street, there's yeah. also there's uh, Eurovea close there, right? No? Not, not so close. It's down there, but uh, if you go down, Shantsova would be central. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But Dungeon Pub, for example, is there? Have you heard of Dungeon Pub? Ah, uh, yeah, I think yes. So that's different. But I used to live in that building, and we had a, a man that was in a wheelchair. And he was wheel bound. Wheel bound is the word for somebody who's forever gonna be in a wheelchair for his whole life, right? And his his family literally every time they needed to go out on a walk with him, and his old lady that was taking care of him that she had dedicated her whole life to him, they would need to, she she would need to take him, put him in the chair, and then go down a very s- steep set of stairs, very steep. And she would need to hold and and go down with him. And I tried. I helped him a few times, and it was hard for me to yeah. do it because it's heavy and it easily slides, right? So d- during um owners meeting, because I owned the flat there, I was like, "Can we build a ramp?" And all of the owners of the building are like, "No, we cannot do that." Yeah, that's the ignorant people we were talking about. And I, I just couldn't understand like why people are like that it's hard to describe you know like um, some people they they don't want to do it because they have to put some effort in it maybe or they just basically want to do it to piss other people or i don't know you know and these are neighbors for years that they lived in that building since he was born and they never thought but That's just an example with this with uh, the man in the wheelchair. But also, we had a situation with uh, old Babka there. She was very old. She was like ninety, and she would go to church every day. And she had these uh, yeah, walkers or yeah, both of those crutches, crutches. Ah. And she would. I mean, it would take her literally like an hour to walk that street to get to church and to come back. And her problem is that her house was the first one there, but she had to go up those steep stairs. And the light would always Turn shut off. down yeah. before she made it. Like, and I had to argue with the neighbors first that can you make it longer so she can make it to her house safe, because she can fall or anything can happen to her. And can you believe that they didn't care? But eventually, I got the the building manager to change the timer. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people like this. Cruel. It's cruel. Yeah. And uh, I also met a lot of bad people when, when I uh, I think it was like one and a half year ago. I was uh, training in a gym with the uh, with the personal trainer. He had some more people and so on. And uh, I made some Instagram story. I think that we we're training together, and I tagged him in it. He shared it, and uh, some uh, random guy with without name. Of course. of course, of course. Yeah, uh whispered him that uh if he if he has uh fallen so down that he's now training with the cripples or so, uh, I don't know if I said it right not uh, fallen uh, like Yeah, it makes sense. That he's g- gone so much down, I guess. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah like he gone so much down that he has to train with the cripples now. I was like, what the fuck? I was like I was like Answer him that I'm waiting for him, and I'll show him who's the cripple. Like, let, let's set it on the bars. We see who does more pull-ups, and so on. And he was like, "Nah, nah, just <laughs> ignore him." And I can also imagine that one punch from you is probably <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, not fighting. <laughs> But I mean, if if oh, it yeah. were to that. no, no, just we just do it the sports way, you know. We go to the street workout course. We get up on the bars. We see who does more pull-ups, who does more dips, who can do more push-ups, and so on. You know. Yeah, that's absolutely and right. And if I'm a cripple, I think losing to a cripple will be like a big shot for him, you know. He wouldn't because if he was anonymous in the first place, 
then then what can you expect right uh there's a question here from Effie oh Max welcome Max by the way the the voice super chat is working if you want to try it i would suggest to also speak about hobbies and life yeah we're going to get there Dennis has a lot to say also outside of life on a wheelchair for sure for sure again i love denko and alex content it is just me interested absolutely right and we're going to get to that to that topic uh for sure we are not done just yet yep <laughs> so back to we discussed uh, your hobbies with gaming we discussed with working out have you ever thought of becoming a uh, like a dedicated fitness person guru well actually i have the street workout certificate uh uh level 1 and 2 as the only person with disability in the world it was wow. by, it's uh, it was uh, by world calisthenics organization it's not really hard to get it you just have to pay for it and go there for 8 hours and obviously they are looking at you and seeing uh-huh. if you're skilled enough to get it and so on but uh, yeah i was the first one to get it but mostly because i asked like yo can i join this course and try to finish it and they were like yeah let's go for it there was a lot of people on new people i met and they were, when they saw me making handstand and walking on my hands they were like what the fuck am i doing here <laughs> <laughs> i have a lot to catch up to <laughs> those people and so uh, what have you done with that nothing really i just made it for myself i just wanted to be sure that i'm doing it right when i'm working out and so on but uh, after that i i needed uh, I needed my own uh, trainer anyways because it's always better if someone's watching over you if you want to become really good. And from your perspective do you think that no me people knowing this could motivate them to also go for that certification or no? I'm not really sure. I don't know if if uh, you know there's a lot of stuff that doesn't just make sense and people get it just because they want to get it and i think i just wanted to get because that certificate at its own uh is like nothing you still mm. need to get a trainer's degree like the official one and that one works like a i don't know just like a small part of something more you know about the uh, different types of training or i don't know how to say that word but it's like a small art Mm-hmm. to to your training license but you can come up with your own i guess training program yeah yeah i c- i could do that and uh yeah there's a lot of stuff i do a bit different and uh, people with uh different medical conditions could try do it also and i could share the knowledge i have so they don't have to think about it by themselves and they can start where i ended and so on but uh i don't know if that will work it's i'm not i'm not sure about it you know like there's literally not that much people that uh, really want to do street workout as maybe you don't know yet <laughs> maybe i would go i would go to your training if you if you had look at this disgusting brusco <laughs> well <laughs> i have a really big pupek too so <laughs> pupek <laughs> that's a new word for me <laughs> you mentioned before we we got started that you are having a no sugar diet. Uh well, it's not a diet. I just uh stopped drinking sugar like uh, in uh, in drinks, you know, because yeah, I uh, I also like eating cake so and so on and I just uh kolachik. Yes, kolachik <laughs> cookie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I'm not saying I'm on a diet. I just stopped drinking sugar, any kind of sugared water and uh I do not eat that much of uh let's say uh sweets sweets yes I'm sorry uh, so how has that changed have you seen any change uh, since you stopped I had uh I had trouble with my uh, face that I had a lot of acne and mm-hmm. uh and also with my uh shoulders it's because of uh when I had the hem treatment it uh it really damages your body and there's a l- long time to regenerate and even after you regenerate your body will still take some damage from it like uh let's say 
when you're 20 years old, you're 20 years old. Mm -hmm. But when you're 20 years old and you underwent for uh, one, two years of a chem treatment, your body ages more. You like, like physically, you're 20. Uh, like uh, no, not physically. Mm -hmm. Like on a paper, you're yeah, yeah. you're 20, but your body is let's say 28, 30. You know, because of that. Just from that damage. Yes. Actually, it looks like the the donation thing is not working. But good evening, Matt. How are you guys good doing evening. today? We are doing quite well, actually. We're having a interesting discussion about everything today. So and yeah, and yeah, and then I noticed that um, sugar doesn't make me feel good. And uh, I have to stop with it because as Corona started, I also started drinking a lot of sugar water, like Coca-Cola and uh, cola and a lot of that stuff. Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the worst. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, on the go, I was like, okay, let's end this. <laughs> you know, uh, I like sweets, okay, but uh, no more drinking any sugar. So if I drink something, it's a... Uh, uh, drink that has zero zero sugar or and when i uh, eat a cake it's like uh, cheesecakes mm -hmm. and so on that it has like a lot of protein protein in it and uh it's not often it's like one or two times a week i get one mu one small piece of cake so you reward yourself yes. on your cheat days actually w what i was going to offer is sugar free uh zero i have coke zero oh <laughs> 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 if you get too warm, by the way. And let me know because we have a fan as well. Um, no, I'm okay. If you would like to turn it on as well. I I don't know if it's if it's okay to ask, but I, I'm really interested to know about your romantic story and how you how you met your girlfriend and Well and just also your engagement. <laughs> Red, Red gives me a life at the university. <laughs> Find something else, Max. That's horrible. You will regret it. Yeah, I uh, I found out that caffeine is actually doing really bad stuff to me. It starts with uh, when you feel like I start feeling uh, pressure on my chest when I drink anything with oh. uh, with uh, too much caffeine in, in it. That's definitely not good. Uh, yeah, so I stopped with that too. Oh, it's working now. Oh, so it started working. Go figure. <laughs> Thank you, Max. It had a small delay, but it worked. And like only two hours after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so probably tomorrow we will get the second <laughs> second one. So so tell us about the romance. Well, everyone is asking about our romance, but uh, to be honest, there was no romance in the beginning, I'd say. What? Uh, well, uh, everyone is asking for some kind of... Uh, super romantic story how how i met with my fiance like and so fairy on tale. yeah yeah <laughs> but the truth is that i actually just uh sent her a message on facebook if she's sleeping what <laughs> you s you slid into the dms yes <laughs> but the, ro the romance started then you know like but she you knew her before or uh, it was totally random i think facebook suggested her to me Oh God! So uh, you didn't even know. People you her. may know. Yes, <laughs> yes. People you may know, and now <laughs> I know. <laughs> now you know each other. <laughs> but uh, was she somebody related to your friends, or completely in a stranger? Yeah, she was pretty much a stranger. I just saw her for a few times in the city, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. once or twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that was it. We started chatting, and it took like one year before we got together. But amazing. So you see, guys, sliding into DMs does work. But I guess you have to be polite to a nice. Yes. <laughs> Not just anybody. You, you can't ask her, hello, how are you doing? Because that's that's the question you'll never get answered to. So uh, you start like I started. Hey, are you sleeping? <laughs> and you, just, you were very caring. You just trying yes, to find yes. out. Oh, it says here, Effie is saying that Gabe Peñas is MVP. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Oh, God, that name totally messed with my mind. Uh, do you know Coke Zero is even worse than standard one? Uh, yeah, probably, but sugar is the worst thing for me. Your body feels sweet. Uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of aspartame in it, and uh, I know that uh, what you're talking about does make sense, but uh, it's not like I'm drinking uh, zero sugar Coke all days, you know? It's like I'm drinking water, and if I go out with the friends, I get one... One small glass of it, you know, like, I, I don't know how much is it, 
330 milliliters, Probably, I don't know. Uh, something uh, like I that. I still have difficulty with European measurements. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> After 16 y years of living in Slovakia, I still can't get used to centimeters and <laughs> and milliliters and all that. So it's yeah, I, I got the same with uh, the American. So have you been to the U.S.? No, never. And w l let's shift the discussion there to... Uh, to where you would like to go and where you like to travel or wherever you've been. So what location, what was your favorite location so far? Uh, Disneyland in Paris. Paris. Yes. And, and why was Disneyland your favorite location? I, I didn't want to go there when I was like 15. You know, my, uh, my parents, parents took me there, wanted to take me there. And I was like, that's for kids. <laughs> what, the, wh what do you want from me to go there? You know, what, what do I do there? Then when I went, I was like, okay. <laughs> I love it here. <laughs> I was like, I w at first I was like, oh, look at all this. It, it was Halloween. So uh -huh. there, there was like a million people or maybe billion, <laughs> like a lot of people there. And uh, when I got into this land, I was like, okay, so how do I go to a roller coaster and so on? And then I checked the roller coasters and there was this line, really long lines. And there was also the timer for how long you will be waiting in the line. Oh, yeah. And that was like 120, 130 minutes. And I was like, God damn, what do I do? And then uh, a guy was like, oh, well you, you're disabled. You can get the disabled pass. I'm like, what's the disabled pass? Well, you can jump in front of everyone if you get the disabled pass. You go from the back doors and you go straight to the roller coaster. I'm like, Did you have to pay for that? Or no, that was just no, it's free. How does it work? They put you on in the ride and they just secure you or uh you go from the mostly in most uh roller coasters or any kind of attraction in there you go to the not entrance but the when you leave exit exit ah oh, goddamn <laughs> <laughs> we're here to learn yeah you go you go to the exit and uh they open the door for you you go there you just wait for the for the roller coaster or whatever you're in to come, mm -hmm. and then you just imp. Ju just imp. <laughs> just imp. <laughs> <laughs> just jump in. <laughs> but they help you. Uh, they don't have to help me. Uh -huh. Mostly. Mm -hmm. In some attraction, I, I, I don't like... Uh, when uh, strange people are helping me, not because I'm uh, I'm not thankful for it, but because they don't know how to help yeah. me. You know, so I'm more like uh, my family helps me. So yeah, but uh, mostly, well, as you've seen, as I got in mm. in your room and I, I got uh, up on my chair, I can climb almost anywhere if I have something to grab. So uh, so your upper body strength is quite. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and so you got into the roller coaster that way. And what was your favorite ride? Uh, I think it was a uh, Hollywood Tower Hotel and uh, Space Mountain, and there was a uh, that thing that was called something Mining Company. Mm -hmm. It was like you were in a God damn, what's it called? When you're mining gold and you get it in the cart. So you're dragging a cart, or you? No, no, no. You're inside the cart. Okay, mining cart. Yes, mining cart. So uh, and you go on a roller coaster in into the mountains and so on. So you're a fan of roller coasters. Oh, a big one. Oh, I'm, and I'm scared. There, there was one called Rock and Roll, and that one was also great. Uh, I'm a complete chicken. Grazie when it comes to roller coasters. I I love fast cars and roller coasters. I love it when your stomach gets into your head uh, when someone pushes the m the pedal to the metal. <laughs> don't, re don't remind me of that because I was with uh, Duklok, Dushan. Oh, yeah, Tesla has some nice speeding. Oh, God. I vomited three times <laughs> from that experience. Wait, really? Because he told me to, like, okay, wait. And he went from zero to God knows how fast. And I just felt like I was on a roller coaster that just... Whoop, and I was just like... Ah! Stop, please. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the <laughs> torque is crazy in electric cars because it just starts at the maximum and is always at the maximum. So, Have you met Lady Hoonigan? Uh, nope. You should. I, 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 I know her. Uh, I think I saw some streams also with uh, Devi. Mm -hmm. Not sure if they're together. I don't know if they stream together, but Devi should come as well to the podcast. We still need to agree on a date, but 
She should take you on on her car. She likes that drifting. Do you oh. like drifting too? Well, yeah, I'm okay with drifting, but uh, I I just like the fast cars more. Like the when it when it just pushes you into the seat, you know, and that that's the fun part. But mostly, I would love to drive a fast car on my own. But that's also a problem in Slovakia because there's a lot of rental companies, mm-hmm. but there's not a single one that will rent you a car that is made for uh, pe- people in wheelchair. You might need to do it maybe in Austria. No? I'm not sure if there, w- there will be any like that because mm-hmm. it's like maybe you can rent a car that's for uh, daily use, mm-hmm. but there's I, I haven't seen any of these rental companies having a supercar, like, well, let's say a supercar, it, it doesn't have to be like Lamborghini or mm-hmm. so on, let's say like... Uh, AMG, Mercedes, or something like that. What I, is I nev- your dream speed demon car? If you could have one. Hmm. One? Uh, there, there's, <laughs> no <laughs> <three>. <laughs> well, there, there's not one, to be honest, because there's some cars I'd love to have. Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, Lamborghini, Huracan, and Aventador are really great, but uh, Nissan GTR is like a, a choice... I might be able to reach in the future if I work on myself because that's it's an, it's uh I think they cost like hundred thousand dollars new one, which is well it's a lot of money uh-huh. but it's not like a Lamborghini that costs two hundred fifty and three hundred you know. You need to become the personal trainer, so look drift. Welcome to the membership. He joined at level A one. Hello there. When I look at your shelf, I think I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the background. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? Do you recognize any of them? Well, I see the guy from Mer- Mario up there. Bowser? Uh, yes, yes. Majora's Mask, The Legend of Zelda. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty trippy. Pretty uh, trippy. I never played Legends of Zelda. You need to. You need to play it. Like get an emulation device and try it because it's The Legend of Zelda is the best game rated of all time. Really? Yep. Uh, he says the Nissan GT-R is the best car. It's Nissan. a Lambo on budget. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's Lambo on budget. But uh, And also, if I if I ever get rich, I, I also want to have a C63 AMG Mercedes-Benz, but uh, not the latest one. I like the one from 2014. It's the last uh, atmospheric engine with a 6.2-liter And uh, eight cylinders, I think it's. I th- yeah, I think it's eight cylinder. So it's like. Uh, you can see me looking at you completely puzzled because I know absolutely nothing. Nothing about, about cars. cars. <laughs> I am the most ignorant person when it comes to cars. Oh, I love cars. I I actually don't even like to drive anymore. I'm scared to drive here in oh. Slovakia, and not because Slovakia is any worse, but you know it's different than what what I was used to because I drove till. Maybe from sixteen till the age of eight, not twenty something, and then I haven't driven, ah, like yeah. really driven. Like it, I picked up a car a few times. I needed to take someone to the hospital, and but maybe you need to pay for the courses again because you can not curses co- courses courses yeah yeah I probably would, but I would need to learn this as well because I'm not. I'm really good with automatic, but manual. Uh, you can actually pick uh, automatic cur- courses, I think, because I... Uh, oh, don't worry, I'll drive you. Thank you. I only have a driver's <laughs> license for uh, automatic transmission. Because when I was uh, getting my driver's license, the instructor asked me if I want to be driving manual. I was like, no, because it's... It's uh, way more complicated when you do everything with your hands. You have your cart fitted with these uh, uh, pedals? Yeah, I, I just made a video about it on TikTok. Uh, okay, I need it, to check it out. It's in Slovak, it. though, so... It's okay, Rozumiem. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> it's... Uh, I think I, I shown it there really nice, so you will see every point of it. But it's like it's like uh, you have a gas, you you like this to have a gas and you push to brake and uh, it's uh, 
you have a steering wheel and it's on the left side of your steering wheel so it's it's like you can uh, with your uh, thumb you can hold your uh, steering wheel and you can also gas and brake with left part so of your left hand it's like a really complex video game yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's fun actually a lot of people enjoy it too so i i had a friends they were like oh can i try it i i was like yeah but if you make an accident someone will kick your ass <laughs> Sure, it's probably expensive to outset it like that. Max, thank you for joining the fams at uh, A1 level. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I see that we have a we have to buy cars before 2035. <laughs> yes, because then it will change that you cannot buy combustion engines or yeah, uh, yeah. And Citroens are at least reliable. Mm. Mm, I don't know. I don't know much about uh, Cit- Citroen. A good brand. Ah. Uh. I don't know. I have, like, my, <laughs> my girlfriend has Citroen, and uh, this summer her window fell out. So, <laughs> so how <laughs> random the window! Yeah, she, she just she just went to the, uh, what's it called? The doctor for uh, pets. The veterinary. Uh, yeah, veterinary. She just went to veterinary, and she jumped on the hole, yeah, a hole, pot- pothole on the yeah, road. Yes, yes, and <laughs> she heard some kind of noise, but. She didn't see it, and when she parked by the veterinary, she went out of the car and looked, and her window was like holding on one tiny piece and just swinging there, you know. How do you explain that to the insurance company? <laughs> well, I don't know. Before we forget, uh, we need to take a picture, and you need to sign the PC. Okay. So every guest that comes to something, Poan Glitzky signs the PC. PC is going to be a giveaway <laughs> eventually. Oh. It has every single guest that we had here. You're actually the 20th guest, I believe. Oh, let's use the other one because this one is empty, I think. So, again, you can choose anywhere that you want to sign. So, guys, while he's signing, I'm looking at the chat. So, send your questions. Okay, just a second. I, I think I have to put headphones headphones down. Yeah. So while he's doing that, I'm looking at the chat, what you guys are saying. Uh, it's good so far, 2001 Citroen, pretty good. Uh, very <laughs> unreliable, it says. Uh, what type of Citroen has your girlfriend? I have no idea. C1 Pinky. <laughs> what is a, is that a specific model? Uh, it's a C1 model, and it has some, I think it has some, pink color in it or something like that originally why did you color your hair because i thought that the black hair was boring i like it and you signed already oh not yet okay so again i, I signed your chair by mistake <laughs> yeah no problem so guys you are i'm still looking at the chat if you guys uh have any questions miguel you know the question you must ask Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you like Slanina? I love Slanina. But they need to hear you. So once you're done signing, he will answer that question, Vendo. Pink floor mats. <laughs> so I'm still, we're still looking at the, at the chat, guys. About tattoos. Why did he choose the tattoos? I wanted to make, I wanted to make a guy on a wheelchair, but I don't know if looks like a guy on a wheelchair. Yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> it looks beautiful. And so first question, when he's coming back. Thank you for your signature. Thank you too. So the first question that they didn't hear is if you uh, are a fan of Slanina. Yes, I'm a big fan of Slanina. We at the Something Poang Litsky community are... Extreme fans of Slanina. So you're a bacon kids. We're bacon kids. <laughs> Maybe that should be our name, guys. Bacon kids. And the question, the second question was about your tattoo. So I see that you have Stan Lee. Yes. So uh, I chose... Yeah. Wait a second. You're going to show us, guys. So here's uh, oh, Venom. Here's Spidey. Here's Webb. Uh... 
It's because I'm a big fan of Marvel, obviously. You can see also Stan Lee's sign in here. And uh, also the reason is that uh, it's good, it's bad, or let's say this one's good, this one's evil, and the web between is a life, you know? So uh, if you know what I mean by mm -hmm. And also because I just love Spidey and Venom, obviously. So you're a big fan of Spider-Man. Yeah, and also because I do climb on the walls. You should get a Spider-Man suit. <laughs> well, actually, I wanted to, but uh, my legs are really skinny and it just looks hilarious if I get into it. But that's comedy gold. <laughs> you know, Because you, you in a Spider-Man suit climbing, even if it looks a little bit funny, actually it would be hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm scared that the only thing that uh, you will see in the suit is uh, my balls, you know, like <laughs> because the legs are too skinny, they maybe won't hide them, you know. It will, be just will make you more fans. <laughs> well, <laughs> the the only thing that will be swinging on the walls won't be me, but my balls. You heard it first, guys. Here, so next is the picture. Let's get the mic here so we can see it too. Smile, pretend you like being here. <laughs> Very nice, thank you so much. Uh, I always forget these things. Venom's not really good. He's an anti-hero. He, he joins the heroes for the cause of greater good, but uh, he does what he wants to do, you know? Like, he doesn't care if he hurts someone, if he helps himself, you know? The way he does it. I know that, uh, yeah, if the world is in trouble, he, he's helping out, but... You really can't say he's a good guy, you know? Like, just biting off heads of people and because so he, on. Because he's hungry, he has to eat. <laughs> he has to, but you know what I find very funny about, or interesting about Venom, is actually he's a reject. Yeah. And it's from his planet. He's a weakling, considered a weakling, yes, and rejected yes, and yes. shunned. And uh, he he beat Riot's ass. And Riot was the most one of the most powerful symbiotes, if mm, I'm right. Yep. Uh, Denko, have you ever been to the Netherlands? Max, Max is asking. Uh, I have never been to the Netherlands, but uh, I have a good story about this one. If Please, I, if okay. we still have a time, we have all the time in the world. Uh, what your your girlfriend? And I hope she will be okay. Ah, she will be fine. She has a cat there, <laughs> and she's al allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have told. Oh, but she should be okay because they're hypoallergenic. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're friends now. Let's hope. So I, I, I never been to Netherlands, but uh, I want to visit Amsterdam because that's, yeah, you, you asked me what I want to visit. So I want to visit Amsterdam, New York, uh, New Zealand, and uh, California Muscle Beach and California Disneyland. That's a very specific muscle beast, uh, muscle beach. And uh, uh, I, I have a really good story about the Netherlands because the. The way I'm speaking now is because of I had a friend from Netherlands. When I was in the sixth grade, I was fired out of uh, English classes. You were kicked out. Yes, yes. It was oh, why. The, it was voluntary. Okay. And uh, I went there, and my teacher told me that uh, I'm the worst student she ever had, and I will be never able to speak English. What a picture. <laughs> no, no, she was okay. She was okay. I, I was the kid. But still, <laughs> that's uh, instead of učitelka is pichutelka. And uh, not really, but I think I just coined a new word in yeah. Slovene, China. Pichu tjelka. Pichu tjelka. <laughs> That's a teacher that will teach you Pichu. <laughs> <laughs> Look at our theme here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw it when I entered the room. I was like, don't be Pichus. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what every guest comes in and sees. <laughs> yeah. So please tell us. Okay, so let's get to the story. So uh, she fired me and then. In the seventh grade, I had cancer, and I had to study at home. But I did not study. I was playing World of Warcraft all day, all night. And uh, I played with a guy from Netherlands, and a guy that was born in Africa, French colony, then moved to Paris to study there and live, and then moved to London to live and work there. So those two people taught me English, and... Everything I know now is thanks to them, mostly. And it's very good. If yeah. You just learn from that. Uh, I, I saw I was really talented in languages because uh, if you wanted to teach me the language, I if I didn't want to, I won't learn it. You know. But uh, 
when I uh, my uh, stepdad is uh, from uh, Austria, and I was nine when my mom met with him, and uh, he was speaking uh, only German to me, and I was really good at German at the time. I also had uh, uh, Germany lessons in school since uh, third grade till ni- ninth, mm-hmm. ninth. So six. Six years. Yeah, for six years, and also on middle school, I had some German. Even my, even my teacher in uh, when I was on the gymnasium, told me that uh, I should uh, graduate also from Germany. I was like, ah, I don't, I don't want another language. Like I'm fine with English, and uh, yeah. So just by speaking to them, well, I was really curious. You know, if I didn't understand th- something, you said like, you told me at the start of the podcast that if I don't know how to say some word i should just say it in slovak mm-hmm. but uh, what i preferred was that i tell you what i want to say i i try to describe it as much as i can that's the best way and you tell it. me the word and i will remember it mm-hmm. and that's absolutely the best way to do it because uh when when i'm teaching like as you know i one of my things is i still teach english but one of the difficulties to do it here in the podcast is that some people are afraid that they will be judged. Like I had already guessed, like previously tell me like, don't put me in the spot or ah. don't. Yeah. Because they're, they're so afraid this whole world of being an influencer. And I'm sure you must feel it somehow. There's hate as well. Yeah. People. Yeah. Well, um, I think people are, I, I don't, I don't really understand some people because there's always people learning something If you don't know something, just ask for it. Don't try to... There's either people that are trying to play intelligent and try to force you into something or force you into their opinions and so on, even though they are not right, or just there's a lot of people that want to ju- also judge you, as you said, if you are not right. But it's okay if you ask, I think. Yeah, it, it's completely okay. Look at that. Maxim Vaz just became a member as well. Level A1. Thank you, Maxim. Welcome to the family. Hello. And look, they get uh, whenever they become a member, they get that little Miguelito oh. emoji next to their names. And then they can also use these emojis here. Like, look, this is Milo, who you met. Yes, yes. This is Char. No, you met Charlie, sorry. Oh, wait, you have more cats. Yeah, I have two. Oh. And the other one is a Maine Coon. I will show you after. He's huge. <laughs> And Gile, I also have a parrot there. You have a and, parrot. Yeah. And there is a heart Miguelito. Devil Miguelito. Not debil. Devil. <laughs> and LGBTQ Miguelito here. Nice. Tiny fly. Oh, they put them here for you to see. And also there's, there's Alex. Your cats are definitely not hypoallergenic, but we are friends anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she's watching. Yes. Sending greetings from... Uh, let's Netherlands to my old clubhouse friend. Yeah, so Max, as you see, it is a dream of Denko to visit the Netherlands. So maybe you guys can get in touch. Do you know Max? Not really. Max is a, used to be work for Telerano, and he was uh, doing, he was interviewing people when he was little. Like as a kid, he was interview. You you probably met him at Vida Do as well. Uh, I think I saw him somewhere, but I'm I'm really bad at remembering faces. I only remember a face when I get into a deep conversation with someone. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm, I'm the opposite. I don't remember names, but when I see their face, I will remember the name immediately. Uh-huh. It's from teaching. It becomes a skill. So, Max, you can be in The Hague, but you can show him around Amsterdam, I'm sure. Uh, let's see what else. I was also studying German in middle school, and I think I, it was from the fifth to ninth grade. I literally had the best grades, but now, after a year, I can't remember anything from German. Yeah, the, the fun part is that I do understand some german words still well if 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 i if you put me in a german speaking country and tell me okay go and do whatever you want i will manage to get into speaking there but uh, it's like really bad now because i i just went straight to english i was like why the hell do i need german i can speak just english you know and i stopped speaking german but i can i i i still remember a lot of swear words uh, and i can scheiße Yeah, Arschloch. <laughs> I have my essential German. Uh, and maybe you can tell me how good it is. You can judge me. Uh, ich heiße Michael. 
Ich tance für Geld. Ich bin nicht teuer. <laughs> teuer <laughs> is expensive? Yes, I'm yes. not expensive. Uh, <laughs> That's my essential German. you dance for money? Brother need Geld. Are you like a magic mic? <laughs> Apparently, but with a... T- Channing tattoo. With a little slanina <laughs> extra. <laughs> I think that we met somewhere probably Vida do, but we never talked much. This is Max talking to you. And yeah, sure, whenever you're in Amsterdam, I can show you interesting places and sites, Max. But really interesting places, not interesting places. Yeah, like, uh, I think he meant the red light. This <laughs> thing, <right>? Probably. Probably, <laughs> for sure he did. I saw some videos. Is that something that you would be interested to to visit just out of curiosity? Uh I think yes. It was fun. It, it's it's just it's really I'm really curious how can there be girls, you know, just in behind the glasses, just it's behind the glass. It's really so. fun. But I was kind of offended when I was there because I was walking there and everybody was getting pulled in and offered to go in. Ah, and, yeah. and nobody was talking to me. Like what the hell? <laughs> well, The bad thing is that if one of them grabs me, I can't run away. <laughs> Sorry, I have to. No, I have no. to go. I have to go with them. <laughs> What can I do? <laughs> She's pulling nah, me. <laughs> nah, even even if I go there, uh, we, we're going there with my fiance because we're both really curious. So she will she will be protecting me with her body. I'm sure she will knock out uh, whoever's trying to pull you. Yeah. So you discussed Amsterdam, but we didn't talk about the specific place, Muscle Beach. And that's mm-hmm. sometimes associated with Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example. Yes. So maybe the audience would like to know more about that. Hasta la vista. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't even know why Muscle Beach. You know, I just like California. I just like it. I think the Disneyland is in California too, right? And there's one and there's one, but Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know. It's just like there's everyone training on the Muscle Beach and I just... I just want to take one training in a muscle beach in California, you know, like take a bath in the sea and, uh, uh, well, let's swim in the sea, not a bath. <laughs> Maybe you can if you want. <laughs> It is possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then just uh, have one uh, training in there. So when are you going? Well, that's the problem. Uh, due to my disability, I have really big trouble for... Uh, long travels you know i can i can't go too far because uh i can't really lose the uh, lose i can't really use the disability bathroom as other disabled people and uh that's the problem for me that if uh if we were going as we went even to the vacation this summer i have to hold my uh pp mm-hmm. for uh, the whole trip till we get there i i I trained myself to hold it for twelve hours. Jesus, I would fail, yeah, so I trained myself like that, so I can hold it for twelve hours, but that's like my maximum and uh the problem is that uh if you travel to America with the uh, with all the breaks between the flights, like you know you, you stop with some other countries and so on it it can take i think up to sixteen hours. Like even even if the flight itself is like ten hours, you still have to be two hours uh before at the airport mm-hmm. and then you waste another hour at the a- airport when you uh when you disembark. Yeah. Isn't there when you reach your destination? Some so. mod that you could I mean I mm-hmm. know that there's the catheter, but that would be uh, yeah. unnecessary. The problem is that uh, I have to cater, d- c- use the caterer myself, mm-hmm. but uh, not because of I cannot hold it, mm-hmm. but because of I can't push the uh, it out of me. You know, uh-huh. I have hard time push. I can hold for as long as I want, but I can't push it, so I have to use the catheter, and I cannot use it on the disabled in the disabled bathrooms because and toilets, mm-hmm. because uh, if I get infection, my vacation is. Jesus completely Christ. missed yeah so uh yeah that's the problem even the direct flights take like 10 to 12 hours and two hours before then you reach your destination and then you have to move to the hotel and that's another one to two hours so that's like at least 14 to 16 hours if you want to travel to america mm-hmm. so uh maybe a private jet if i get 
really rich. <laughs> or maybe somebody takes you guys. If we have any millionaires watching, let's make uh, Denko's dream come true. Send them by jet or Concord. <laughs> mm. Bring back the Concord. Maybe Biden is watching this. Definitely not. He's probably sleeping now. <laughs> <laughs> As 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 everybody knows, so we discussed your hobbies. We just discussed where you want to travel. Now I I kind of wanted to discuss with you your more about your YouTube channel and how you're using that to inspire people. If you receive any messages from people, any stories that you really moved you. Uh, there was one story, and I'm really really sad about it because. Uh, It was a guy that was on a wheelchair and he also was a cancer patient and he wanted to meet with us, but it was uh, Corona and uh, I was also scared to meet with strangers. I didn't know if it's really truth and uh, he he had his uh, wife and they, they were watching me and Alex with his wife, but uh, he, he passed. Passed away. Yeah, passed away. So... Uh, Yeah, I was really sad about that one. I uh I truly wanted to meet him. I just wanted I just didn't want to endanger myself like meeting with the random people and so on. So I I wanted to give it some time to get to know if it's really true and so on. But uh as the time flew he passed away. So that thing got me really mad. Did you ever meet with his wife? No, no. And you're not in touch anymore. Mm, I think I have some messages in my direct, and I she she wrote me something. Well, not something. I know what she wrote mm-hmm. me, but I I had no words to answer that. You know, like I just couldn't find words for that. Yeah, and so I I often think about uh, working with children, and lately you hear more and more about how they want to harm themselves or even you know take it to the more extreme situation and i i also relate to the experience of not knowing what to say or do yeah it's yeah some situations are really hard what about some maybe positive ones that made you happy yeah there's of sad there's a lot of guys making me happy mostly when i see that someone that's uh, also with a rare medical condition tells me that I inspire him and he will try to work on himself and he he likes my videos. That's what makes me happy because uh, I see that it, it makes sense what I do. You know? And also there was a... We made a video about uh, how to not treat people with dis- with disability with uh, Frantisek. Mm-hmm. We made it, I think, like two weeks ago. It does not have much views, but uh, it has a really high value to me. Because there was a lot of people thanking us for saying it loud. Mm-hmm. You know, like pe- people with a uh, rare medical condition. Do you ever think of perhaps shifting into English content? I wanted to because uh, my English is really bad now. Like, Come on. Well, <laughs> I- if you heard me 10 years ago, you, you wouldn't even notice that I'm not a native speaker. Like I was really, really good. I I I'm not trying to flex or something but I know that I was really great at mm-hmm. that time. I when I was graduating the the guys that are giving you uh marks. Yeah. Mm, I was at the B2 level, graduating at the B2 level and the guy was uh teaching kids in a C1 and uh, we went there was a question that was the difference between English speaking countries and Slovakia and I went into healthcare system. And I told him about stem cell transplantations uh-huh. and so on. And I, I had a, I, I knew a lot about it. So it's like a, it's like a really professional medical medical uh, theme. And he was really amazed. So at the time I was, I was really great. Um, now I'm like, I'm okay. I, I, I can manage to say what I want, but it was way better. Did you ever go to the English Olympiad? Uh, no, but I was to German one. Because uh, when I was younger, as I said, I got fired out of uh, English classes, uh, curses, co- courses, mm, and, and, uh, and I was, at that time I was good at German till the seventh grade when I started playing World of Warcraft. 
and I was uh, visiting just the the German Olympics. Uh, yeah, it's it's called it's in school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did you do? Did you win anything? Mm, no, I I think I ended like second or third in uh, in uh, our school. That's pretty good still. Yeah, not bad. We had a, I ha- oh god, I <laughs> I hate him. It's a really good friend of mine. Oh, I thought you were gonna see no, the no, Pichutielka. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 a friend of mine, Paken. He was watching a lot of anime, but uh, at the time there was no internet. You know, Th- there wasn't in that much of internet as it's now. It's it was like two thousand five or four, maybe even three. So he was watching uh, German televisions because uh, they were airing the anime every week. He was watching One Piece in German. Man, that guy could speak German like he was born in Germany. I was like, I'll never win against this one, you know, because I could speak a good German, but I wasn't that 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 good. When we think about your your future plans and and things that you want to accomplish, what is the one project that you want to get off the ground bef- before that European thing as well? But something that you want to do within the next year or two. Uh I have uh I have a cooperation collab with uh with uh Ipechko now. Uh, it's a psychological help. Okay. Okay. It's a free one, it's anonymous. You can if you have trouble you can you can either contact them by phone or mail or or they have a I think they have a also a website where they have a live chat. Not not sure yet. So it's not paid. It's completely no, free, it's free for everybody. It's free for everyone, and they also have a dobra linka, which means like a good line, like uh, and that one is focusing on people with disability because uh, uh, people with disability are at this moment mostly getting like a scam. There's a lot of scam going on people people like that because. They either think you're uh, mentally handicapped or just they see you're easy target, you know. And also, there's a lot of uh, cruel stuff going on against people with disability. You know, not everyone has a great parents and not everyone has uh, great opportunities in life. You know, like I had, I had a lot of luck in this this particular part of my uh, life. So, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this one. I already Yeah. It 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 took some time because I think it started like three weeks ago, but uh we were uh, ordering new mics for uh, the videos because I really want to I want it to be like uh done in a professional way. I just don't want to speed out something just of course. To what what did you buy? Uh we bought a DJI mic. I also just got DJI mics. Yeah, it's it's great. Right? Like I I really love when something's so intuitive and easy that you just plug and play. And pairing when they yeah. go back to the case. Yeah, like you you don't you really you really don't have to do anything with it. You just buy it, put it inside your phone and you go or inside camera and go. And you also want to do it for in real life, for example, or more bl- blogging, for example. Yeah, I also want to do it uh we have a mic on uh, we have a Rode mic on our uh, camera. But uh, the sound is like it's like more from far, and when we do, we have a we have a show now that's called Couple Battle, where uh, there's a point of view where you pretty much say your point point of view from the feminine side and then from the masculine side. You know, like we pretty much let's say we battle, but in a good way. Mm. You know, like. You know why do men do this? Why do men do that? And why do women do this? And why do women do that? And uh, the sound is not. It wasn't so good as I thought it would be with the road mic. So that's why we want to use these ones. And also, I was thinking about some content from the streets. Like, I don't know. I take out uh, another chair and I go to random person. Like, yo, can you get it on a wheelie? You know, like, and it's a, the DJI mics are great for that. For sure, as long as they don't steal them. <laughs> they go with your wheelchair. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll be holding the DJI mic, you know, like uh-huh, okay. I want to. Uh, don't don't clip it on that no, because no, no, you'll I never see it again. And they well, even if it. he steals it, he can use it if he doesn't have a case or. He, probably he can use it as a buy the case and have a third mic, because you can pair. I think up to four. 
Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. It's Damn, so maybe someone who doesn't have it will we'll try to steal it. one more. <laughs> so Hello, Andy. Besides this project with uh, Ipechko, you said? Yes. What else is in the in the future? Well, uh, maybe you want to talk about my dreams right now. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, two kinds of dreams. Let's say the, the one kind of a dream is a dream that I really want to achieve. And then the, is there's a second kind of dream that I will be happy if I achieve this. So the one that I really want to achieve is just... it's. It may it might sound really simple, but I just want to have family and be happy. Nothing really. Would like you would you give up this world of influence and and just settle? Yes, I would. But I don't think we have to because the good part is that Alex is enjoying the influencing as much as I do. She's also enjoying making the videos. And uh I I'm sure if I get to be dead, I'll be showing the world that even a disabled dad can raise a good child. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a question of if, it's just a when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a when. And from your perspective, what would you do different as a parent? Well, I'll try to guide him, but I, uh, I'll let him learn on his own mistakes. I won't be... I won't be that kind of dad that will restrict him to something. I will try to explain everything and make him make his own choice, but in a good way. Mm. And I think that's the most important that you have to do. And obviously take care of the kid. And not give them everything. Yeah. yeah, And uh, yeah, also uh, he has to, if he wants something, he has to work for it. He needs to buy his own jet. Yeah. <laughs> you can and then yours. then he needs to buy jet for his dad. <laughs> That's <laughs> the second thing. I mean, that depends really. You have the a vast vocabulary and things that interest you. I mean, we're reading the chat. I mean, when I switched schools, I was pretty good with technical terms and searching them out. Huh. Can be. Yeah, I was also studying on a Slovak Technic University for uh, two years, but then I got fired. Did, uh, you, did you? So you finished something else or I started two universities at the same time. Oh, that must be hard. And yeah, I so from Monday to Saturday I was in schools and I had one free day and that free day was rest day and I was just sleeping <laughs> because yeah, so I left the, the Slovak Technic University but uh, at the Slovak Technic University I was studying uh, mechanical engineering and I was studying uh, just in English. So all the classes were in were in English. How was the the English from the teachers? It was okay. Or? It was fine. Yeah. It was fine. But uh, it's like I don't think you get much to learn there to do. Uh, well, it's dumb if I say you don't learn. N you learn nothing from there. You learn a lot, but uh, you know, like when there's mathematics, you 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 mostly don't speak that much. Where when you just count mm. and solve problems, you know. For sure. Uh, we're getting to almost the two hour mark. And uh yeah, just go ahead. Go ahead. Last last oh. thing. And then I ended up uh European studies with a master's degree. It yeah. was the second school. European studies. So so you have a master's from European yes. studies. So yeah, definitely you can do something with European Union, right? Yeah. To bring some change to Slovakia. And the, the fun thing is fun part is that they didn't know I have a degree from European studies. They just saw my videos going viral and they just were like yo do you want to represent slovakia i was like yeah why not weirdly enough i got contacted by the slovak embassy in london a couple of years ago to make a video for them and they were paying me and everything but i never saw the video or what they did with it really mm -hmm. so they find people online for these projects and Yeah, but uh, these ones were like uh, I had to I I had to make the video and everything mm -hmm. for them. I send it and well, they already paid me, so if they don't run with the money, <laughs> 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 well, they got the video. I gave them the video, so if they don't want to share it, it's up to them. But uh, I'll be glad if if it goes out because I think it's good. That's their problem, right? Yeah. Well, very good. Um, before we finish, I would like to. 
if you could please leave the audience with a message about maybe some lesson that you learned through through your life and it's always worked for you i always try to finish on a positive note right and i find that that people in their life experience always have something good to teach others so the mic is yours and also please let people know how they can uh, what is your youtube channel what is your instagram so people can can look for you on social networks well you know there's that uh, i don't know if you say it in english cliche mm mm-hmm. there's that cliche like never give up like Yeah, that's true. Never give up, you know, but uh I think the key to everything in this world is when people work together, they cooperate, they help each other so we can become better nations and well, not nations, not just nations. It doesn't matter what nation you are. We can become better planet, let's say. Or better people. As well. So you, you oh, one last question. Are you into games and if yes, yes. He was mentioning that he that he plays games. Yeah, a lot of League of Legends, Counter I used to play and now I I'm waiting for the new Warzone. I think it's coming out in two days, something like that. Yeah, uh, Modern Warfare 2? Yes. It's already out. Oh, so I have to download it. But I wanted to buy a new graphic card, but now I'm waiting for for AMD because uh, I don't want to spend so much money on Nvidia so and it's not good the 4000 series isn't it no no you need to replace your power yeah power supply and i know that i I'll, i think i'll have to do that anyways because i have 980 gtx so it's like a really old one you need a new one then yeah the processor is okay i have i7 8700k so that one will manage 470 maybe 480 Or seventy. Yeah, I think that th- that would be that would be enough for you, but it's it's about uh, having a smart connector is the issue really, because mm-hmm. now the the power sources have a smart connector mm-hmm. that you need to have because the graphics card doesn't regulate the power, so it will pull the maximum amount and burn the cable. Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw four nineties burned a lot of cables, right? It's absolutely insane. But I want to thank you for for coming here and again I apologize that my studio is not I yet wa- ready. I want to thank you for inviting me and uh, that's you don't really have to apologize, you know, because the thing is if you could, you would. I I it. would for sure. Yeah. So sure. yeah, the the problem is that the people that can don't want to. So I'm really okay with it. At least you make make me train a bit, you know, made me So hopefully we will have you uh for part two in the upcoming year because uh, guests will come back so I ah. would like to follow up with you with what's going on and hopefully also with uh with your other half as well if you're watching maybe I'll convince her but it's really hard it's like really hard I, she even got mad at me when her, I told her, her her English is really good so yeah she's I, uh, she's all right she's, she's just a unbeliever yeah but this is the thing there's a lot of bad judgmental people It's true. And in this part I understand, but I I don't think that you guys attract so much of that. There's other people that do that. Well, you would you would be surprised how many jealous people are that guy in a wheelchair has a good-looking girlfriend, but <laughs> does it bother you at all? No, no, I'm actually laughing laughing at it because because I know that it's because they're they're sad. Jealous. Yes. It's probably the the right word. That they yeah but just miserable people that but if someone's jealous you're doing something right in your life so for sure i mean you're getting your blessings right but again thank you for for joining us uh, there's something there that i have for you thank you for inviting me you guys won't see but remember that this week we have another episode a special episode are you a fan of papa pa- peter Oh yeah, I love him. So he's going to be here on Thursday, guys, the 17th at 6 p.m. and we're going to be talking about his new series. Oh, and his Eng- English is amazing. We work with him a lot, so I'm hoping that his English is getting better. One thing is uh you forgot to mention how can people find you online? Oh, uh yeah. you can find me as a uh, Denko Wheel probably everywhere. And uh, Alex and Denko on YouTube. 
Very good. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my members and mods. And as always, love you very much. Thank you.